I used to love science fiction. I think I mentioned in my last video that my childhood didn't involve dreams of becoming a real astronaut someday, but, but it was more filled with dreaming about things like wielding my own lightsaber or flying through the forest of Endor on a speeder bike. But yeah, it's, it's all quite different now. It's no longer the appealing escape from the drudgery of modern living or some sort of guilty pleasure that temporarily transports me to some other world with races of alien beings and sentient robots and whatever else. Nowadays, the vast library of science fiction movies, television shows, books, video games, etc. It all fits into this broader grand deception. This massive heist of our collective consciousness. And I find myself just more and more thinking about this whole question of... How often does science fiction merely build upon the legitimate existence of scientific and technological reality? And how often is it in fact implanting ideas and concepts into our minds, which go far beyond fantastic speculation and just innocent entertainment, but actually preaching a very intentional set of spiritual messages. The more I've invested myself in learning about the history of the allegedly real space programs, the more I've come to appreciate just how blurred this line between science fiction and fictional science really is. How often they play off one another, feed into one another, and really are ultimately only two halves of the same overarching whole. It is truly all propaganda, which works together synergistically to teach humanity that it was from the stars that we were created and that it isn't going back to the stars where our ultimate human destiny lies. It really is an ancient religious teaching, and it's truly amazing to suddenly be at this point in my life where I'm suddenly realizing just how much I was indoctrinated into it for so many years without even realizing it, because I was willingly absorbing so much of this material that I believed was just simply entertainment. good friend of mine who's been exploring enclosed cosmology alongside me over this past year just shared something with me. He was uh, flying home from a vacation recently and he opened up the in-flight magazine to find an article written by somebody who'd worked for NASA for the last 28 years as a mission planner and engineer. The article is largely a, a plea for the, the need to increase the space exploration budget back to where it needs to be to hopefully be able to send humans past just the stage of colonizing Mars, but beyond that and into the rest of the solar system and eventually the galaxy and so forth. But it's in the closing section of this article where the true underlying message really sticks out. And just what a perfect example of how truly religious this whole belief system regarding space and our destiny to explore it really is. It reads, Space, ultimately, is about faith. Faith that our curiosity, restlessness, and willingness to take some risks will lead to treasures we cannot imagine. We must recognize what space does for us as a people and as a nation, technologically, educationally, globally, economically, and spiritually. We need a dream. I'm an engineer, so when I dream I do more than just close my eyes and think happy thoughts. To me a dream is a vision with a plan, one that strains capabilities to the point of seeming impractical. This means more than a moon base, more than a colony on Mars, more than capturing an asteroid. We can't just commit to a decade-long effort and then turn back. We have to keep on going, up through the gravity well. We'll suffer setback, 
but will also achieve astonishing goals. If we meet this challenge, we will be known as the generation who opened up the terrain of space, who settled the greatest frontier. Future generations will remember us for our courage and boldness. The gravity well presents today's greatest exploratory challenge and the single best opportunity to move our society forward. If we agree to move up and beyond the gravity well, then the higher we go, the less it will pull us back. Gravity will gradually release its hold, and we will sever the bonds that hold us below the firmament. And then, the well becomes a ladder. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? I, I swear, that's what it actually says. That's how he ends it. He mentions the, uh, quote, gravity well all throughout the article. Firstly, as this alleged, you know, this literal function of the gravitational pull of the Earth and the Sun and, and everything. But then, really, it's just more of a, a metaphor. A metaphor for, you know, that which is supposedly holding us back as a species. I mean, it, it really is all about evolution. And not just in regards to the past, but to the future as well. And sure, the heliocentric Big Bang cosmology is a necessary requirement for a Big Bang theory. That's pretty easy to demonstrate for anyone willing to look. But that's only half of it, and probably not even the most significant half from a spiritual context. Yes, on the one hand, evolution threatens to deprive the individual of any true meaning by teaching that everyone and everything is nothing more than a big cosmic accident. So why doesn't that simple philosophical deduction wake up a lot more people to the inherent fallacy of evolution? Well, because evolution offers the dream. The ancient dream. The ancient delusion. Lucifer's lie. Ye shall be as gods. Evolution dangles this carrot. It dazzles the imagination with dreams of humanity fulfilling its own destiny and conquering the stars, and along the way unlocking the secrets of the universe which must be awaiting us out there, maybe hiding inside the rings of some distant planet or beneath the cloudy atmosphere of some alien world inside the mysterious ship of some advanced alien species, or embedded within the dimensional physics of the universe itself. I mean, who knows? When we start embracing such fantasies, whether it entails things like warp drives and wormholes, or clone armies and alien armadas, or you know, whatever else, what we're really doing is reaching out for that same old forbidden fruit, that old serpentine lie only in a repackaged, modernized, space-suited form. Now, I'm not talking about getting legalistic or anything, or, or, or trying to say that watching these kinds of movies and shows is itself completely wrong or sinful by itself, but I'm just merely saying all of this in hopes that more people will start opening their eyes and opening and opening their ears to hearing this Gnostic gospel, this evolutionary gospel, that is being preached through virtually every one of these productions, and start seeing how much it really works in conjunction with all the propaganda coming from the quote-unquote real scientists and engineers working at places like NASA, which are bombarding us all the time, even while we're flipping through a silly little in-flight magazine.
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.